Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Out in the middle of nowhere on one of my favorite lonely roads, US Highway 6 between Tonopah and, well, it's a pretty lonely road all the way to the Utah border, but I'm right here kind of outside Tonopah, about to take a road I've never taken before, but one that has a very interesting sign. I mean, have you ever seen a cooler road sign? Golden arrow, silver bow. It sounds like some kind of curse or blessing, not a road sign. Anyway, unfortunately for me, the day I picked to do this is not very good weather. There's all this nasty weather moving in from, gosh, over by the Sierras, actually. I know they got flooding in Death Valley uh, earlier today but it hasn't really rained a lot up here and i think where i'm going is kind of well somewhere over yonder in those hills it doesn't look like super thick clouds it looks like there's sun peeking through here and there i don't know if the if it really seems like it's coming down and i don't feel safe i'll turn around but otherwise i was planning to camp out at this ghost town of silver bow and what's interesting about silver bow is aside from having some standing ruins it happens to be right on the boundary of the nevada test site the best intel I got on how to get to this ghost town was actually on the website for the town of Rachel, Nevada. You know, where the, the town that's right outside Area 51, where the little alien is. Well, they actually have a really cool town website that lists a bunch of interesting stuff in the area to go check out. And, well, Silver Bow and Golden Arrow are both on there. And they provide turn-by-turn, -turn, really detailed driving uh, directions to get there. So I took a screenshot of that, and what with that, my atlas and everything else, I think I'll be okay. Let's go. All right, we've arrived at Golden Arrow. Surprisingly, there's actually 4G cell signal out here. Go figure, the signal's better here than it was on the highway. Maybe it has something to do with the proximity to the test, the test site. But I was able to look up the history of this place. So Golden Arrow was, shocker, a gold mine. Uh, had a very short lifespan in the early 1900s, like I think 1905 to 1908. Uh, but there was a sizable number of people here, hotel, saloon, the whole nine yards. Unfortunately now, well, there's not much left. Uh, we got a pile of rubble here. And then there's a couple different mine shafts, which I'm not a big fan of going down mine shafts. But we can peek down one. And then it looks like there's some, uh, there's like a concrete foundation over there okay well let's just go over and look down this mine shaft make all the mine people happy i'm not gonna climb in there but uh it's probably tapped out anyways i mean the place has been abandoned since 1908 i'm just gonna leave that mine shaft a mystery for now let's go look at this pile of rubble instead okay obviously the people in this town subsisted on a diet of grass and alfa oh just kidding that's not the pile of rubble this is the pile of rubble ha 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 lol Looks like it was an old building <laughs> made out of pallets <laughs> and shot full of bullet holes. So uh, really not gonna be anything super interesting for us to see here. I think this is actually a fairly well explored site. So I'm not expecting to find any like crazy valuable relics, but hey, look, the sun's out. Woohoo! I had a feeling that those clouds were gonna break so hey, it looks like it's shaping up to be perfect camping weather after all. I mean, it is chilly here. I think it's only like 50 degrees, 48 even. But I've got a down bag and I'm sleeping in my car, so I'll be okay. As long as those guys in the, what do they say comes out of Area 51? Like guys in black trucks or white Jeeps or something? I don't know, man. I've been around Area 51 a bunch and I've never seen any of them. Maybe tonight will be my lucky night. Oh, maybe it'll be some hot guy. What if I was camping out here all by myself and one of those uh, black jeeps or whatever they are came down the mountain and this total beefcake got out. I was like, excuse me, you can't. And then our eyes met and it was love at first sight. <laughs> and I led him onto my secret base. <laughs> or maybe I trade him. Hey, buddy, let me into your secret base and I'll let you onto mine. Probably wouldn't go for it. Those guys are all business. Anyway, sort of walking along through what used to be Golden Arrow. And well, it's just a pile of broken dreams now. Oh, wow, well, yeah, this looks like it was just a little one room cabin. You can barely make it out. Real rough stone walls <laughs> and a real rough 
wood burning stove in the corner made out of an old oil barrel. But then over here, we've got that uh, concrete foundation. Let's go check that out. Okay, this looks like it was the most substantial building in town since I don't see any other uh, concrete ruins. This is, must have been the, well, the bank or the hotel or whatever the fanciest building was. Gee, maybe it was the hoe house. <laughs> Actually, I doubt that because I read uh, in a lot of those old mining encampments, <laughs> the Ho house was actually just a tent like these women would come west like you know women that needed to make money and support themselves their kids whatever they just come out and lay down a rug in a tent and do what they had to do i have nothing but respect for those women by the way they call them soiled doves or whatever in fact i feel like there might be a direct spiritual lineage between them and me and it's funny because I'm always trying to get grants from the Travel Nevada, the official state board of tourism, because they're always having these social media contests where they send people on road trips around Nevada to promote it online. I'm like, who's a bigger booster for the state of Nevada than state of Nevada than me? I don't know. But every time I apply, I never get picked. And this last one I entered, I almost got picked, but then at the last minute they changed their plans, and I'm pretty sure it's because, well. Because I used to be a nude model and there's salacious photos and videos of me online. Well, I think that's pretty ironic, Nevada, considering your lineage and your heritage. Anyway, end of rant. Okay, well, anyway, that's all there is to Golden Arrow. Let's get on down the road to Silver Bow. Far out, we made it. I'm gonna explore this ghost town and find a place to camp, but. Whew, let me tell you where I'm not gonna camp. So I followed the road all the way down to the very bitter end and look what it dead ends at. How about that? This is the boundary of the Nevada test site, man, Area 51 and all that, right here. It's funny to think like, I've been to the gate over by Rachel or over by uh, Steve Medellin's black mailbox and the landscape is so different there. Whenever you picture the top secret government base, I always picture from experience, you know, that flat desert landscape with Joshua trees. Not quite like this. I mean, look at this friggin' landscape. This is Nevada, y'all. I mean, look at the landscape on the friggin' base, how beautiful this is. It looks like you go down out of these beautiful foothills and, well, if you look in the distance, which, you know, I'm not spying on you, government. I'm just trying to point a fact out. Way down in that saddle, you can see it is more of the classic flat dry lake bed uh, topography down there. Sure looks nice and sunny down there. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather be camping in an environment like that. I don't really like camping in the cold, a drizzle, but I'm not really gonna compl complain because this is so beautiful. And let me tell you something else. It smells amazing. All this wet sagebrush is awesome. Yum. All right, well, I think I need to drive around a little bit while I have daylight and find a suitable place to camp. Okay, driving around looking for a good campsite. And here's another place I do not want to camp. One guy buried in this big plot, surrounded by this surprisingly intact fence. Oh wow, look what it says. Fred Newton, 1870 to 1922, my beloved husband. Aw, oh, Fred, I'm sure you were an awesome guy, but uh, I'm not sure I want to camp right next to your grave. <laughs> Although I will say some other <laughs> braver people than me did so. Okay, so I don't want to camp by that grave. I don't want to camp by the uh, government base gate. Problem is, there's too many cool places that I do want to camp. There's several really interesting standing structures here at this ghost town. Like, look at this stone cabin. I mean, this thing was built to last. And it's interesting too, like the ground all around it is just covered in old metal cans. I mean, there is a ton of stuff out here. But let's check out this cabin real quick. Love the construction on this thing, look at that. Wood timber door frame, but then look at the window. The window's just stone, man. They found those flat-sided stones to make a window out of. Holy cow, look inside though. <laughs> ha, whole thing's done collapsed. And by golly, ma'am, you've got a tree growing in your living room. <laughs> There's your problem, lady. Oh my God, look how beautiful the sky is. See all those clouds clearing up. Oh, I bet there's a really sexy view out this window. Oh, look at that. 
Whoa, look at that rig. Woo, woo. Well, unfortunately, there's not really a very good flat area to park and camp by this stone cabin. So I'm going to keep driving around and looking. Okay, this second cabin here, corrugated tin shack. Well, it does have a campfire ring out in front of it. And well, to be honest, it's got plenty of flat ground, nice shade trees. Hmm, this might be a decent place to camp. Let's meet the neighbors and see if this is where we really want to set up camp, though. Never know who these people might be. yoo -hoo, Avon calling. Huh? Guess there's nobody there. Let's go in. Oh, yay. These people are terrible housekeepers. <laughs> Holy cow, this building has collapsed. Oh, man, but you can see at one time it was probably pretty nice. Looks like they had a, a shelf there for all their canned goods. They even had some insulation tacked over the wall. Look at that. Mary Ellen jams and jellies. That looks pretty old. A cup to a cup. Coors. Wow, that looks like a pretty old Coors box. Huh, but yikes, man. Place is a mess. Look at this little door, though. It's so, the door jam is so, well, I was going to say the door jam's so low, but it could just be that there's a lot of debris piled up on the ground. Another little room here. Very simple, simple accommodations. Must have been a bachelor. And then there's a tiny little like lean-to room over here with a ladder, which, gosh, I don't know, maybe this is all filled in and it used to go down into some kind of root cellar. Huh. Huh, all right, well, I don't know, man. Kind of spooky to camp next to this thing. Roof's pretty intact, interestingly. But see what I mean about the door jam? Look, <laughs> I can barely fit through and I'm only 5'3". Five, 5'2 five, and a half. Must just be piled up with dirt after all the years. Or maybe people were just shorter back then, you know? They didn't get as many vitamins. They didn't eat as much meat as we do now, or whatever they say it is. Okay, well, I think I, there's one more cabin I want to go check out. Let's see if that might be a good place to camp. Okay, just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, the third place I tried was just right. It's a cute little cabin with the bonus of a busted up old car in the distance. And what's more, there's this great flat area to camp at right near it with a little campfire ring unfortunately it's too wet to have a campfire and I don't typically have a campfire when I'm camping alone anyways because I don't know it's kind of a social thing what's the point but anyway let's check out this cabin it's all wood and it looks to be or it looks to have been pretty well constructed because it's still in pretty good shape oh wow look there's even a bigger fire pit out here if you were here in the summertime with a big group of friends whoo this would be the spot looks like an old chimney or something there and then Oh my goodness, you guys tell me <laughs> what that is. Some kind of big, well, to me, it looks like an air conditioning thing, but it's got to be some piece of mining equipment or something, right? Let me go around this side. What is that? Oh man, too bad Larry's not here. He'd know. My friend Larry, if you remember him from my other videos, he knows all about machinery. Wow. Oh, maybe it was some kind of like mixer or fan or something. Huh, who can say? It's being used for target practice now. Oh my god, you guys, look how beautiful the friggin' sky is right now. Holy cannoli. Before we go in this cabin, just a slow pan of where we are. And a reminder that <laughs> the friggin' top secret government base is right over that hill there. <laughs> right behind my rig. Oh, amazing! This is one of the coolest places I've ever camped. Alright, let's go inside this cabin real quick before it gets dark. It's not in that bad a shape, actually. Kind of dark in here. Apologies for that. Look at the roof is still mostly intact. It smells really sweet in here, almost like vanilla. Oh, hopefully that's not cyanide or something. Wow, look, there was a couple old beds in here for a couple of tired miners. And well, times were tough for the miners. They weren't striking much ore, so they had to drink antifreeze. <laughs> Just kidding. Huh, well, this looks like it was a pretty simple affair. Oh, I was going to say one room cabin, but... Look at that, it's all, there's a room in the back all boarded up. Now, what do you suppose they kept back there? Reminds me of the diary of Anne Frank, like the secret room where they hid the, the Dutch family hid the Frank family from the Nazis. Or actually, it reminds me of some creepy serial killer room. <gasps> what if those guys did? They kept some woman chained up in this room. Oh my God. Yikers. Oh, there's a door. We can just walk right in. Okay, good. I'll go around that side. That'll give us another beautiful chance. 
to look at this. These friggin' cloudless sunset, oh my god. I gotta make myself a drink and enjoy this sunset. As soon as we look at this creepy room, I'll do that. Work first, relax later, right? I got a strong work, work ethic. Okay, so there's the door going into the main part of the cabin that for whatever reason was all boarded up. This looks like it was like a back, almost like its own separate back cabin because it's got shelves in it. You know, like maybe that a bed over on this side, but oh my gosh, I'm not sure you can see it's pretty dark. Let me see if I can turn my flash on. The wall is totally covered in old cardboard boxes and they're kind of cool. Look at this. <laughs> Lucky logger. It's lucky when you're live in America. Oh, excuse me. It's lucky when you live in America. <laughs> Trying to read upside down here. And then look here. We got some Washington State apples. We got some... Well, that's it. Lucky lager and Washington apples. Oh, and of course, whiskey. From Louisville, Kentucky. Ooh, straight bourbon, I'll bet. Oh, it says here. Kentucky Straight Whiskey, Cedar Brook brand. I don't know if that's a good whiskey or not. I've got a really good friend from Louisville. He might know. Wowie. Okay, so they ate a lot of apples. They drank a lot of Lucky Lager, and they drank a lot of bourbon. Sounds like a mining camp to me. Okay, before uh, we lose all the light, I'm going to get back out there and enjoy this amazing sky. Oh, I also want to go look at that busted up old car. Oh my God, look at it. It's just sitting there under that gorgeous sunset sky, waiting to be looked at. Okay, guys. Car guys, get ready. Get your pads and pencils ready and tell me what kind of car this was. Holy cannoli, would you look at this butte. And it's interesting because it just rained. Everything's all shiny and new looking. Chrome bumper. <laughs> and dang, what a bumper it was. Hey, look, the engine's still in it. That's pretty rare for these old cars, isn't it? How many cylinders is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot. Dang. Oh, wow. Let's take a peep in the cab. Oh, wait. Hold on. Look. What does that say? Something that ends in a K. Cranbrook? What's a Cranbrook? Is that kind of car? Huh. <laughs> Everyone's probably yelling at the screen. You dummy. It's a Cranbrook. Everybody knows about those. Oh, well, steering wheel's intact, but not much else. Dang, what a mess. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Looks like it was like the brake or something. Not anymore. Wow, oy. Look in the back. Oh, dang. Even the tires have that new look because they're all wet and shiny. Well, this is cool. I don't do much exploring in the rain. Holy moly, this is unreal. Okay, guys, what kind of car is it? It's a Cranbrook, obviously. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Wow, look how many bullet holes in the side of it though, dang. Look at this, looking for the little side window even. Oh, cute, it reminds me of those old VW bug windows. Oh, and I had them in the back seat too, look. Even the back seat had those old, I don't, what do they call those little windows? I feel like there's a name for it. Huh, all right, cool. Well, that's the old car that I'll be camping next to tonight in this beautiful valley. Just that one little bird in me. Probably 50 mountain lions watching. Wow, this is definitely one of the top places I've ever camped. Kind of reminds me of the place I camped with Larry. I called it, I think they called the video Ghost Camp. But it was really a place called Ames Camp. Kind of similar to this. But this, this place is a lot bigger. Larry would love this. Too bad he's not with me, but I'm on a solo trip. I just wanted to be alone for a few days. So I'm rolling solo. Way out in the backcountry. But I better start making dinner because... I don't want to be fumbling around with it in the dark, and I really want to enjoy this sunset. Not bad. And yes, I drink box wine. What of it? Uh-oh, water's boiling. What's on the menu tonight? Well, we're going to try quinoa and brown rice with garlic with some Bengal lentils and some cashews for added protein. Now, incidentally, for those of you who are worried about a single female camping alone at a ghost town out in the middle of nowhere by a top secret government base, have no fear. 
I've got my machete. <laughs> this is my machete that my fan Blake got me. Thank you, Blake. People are always telling me I should roll around with some kind of protection and, well, by golly, mine's bigger than yours. Seriously though, I'm not worried about anything out here except for maybe, well, mountain lions. And, well, if all goes well, I should be snuggled up in bed with a full belly by the time it gets dark. Locked up in my car, tighter than a you-know-what. And ain't no mountain lion I've met figured out a way to open up a forerunner's doors. So I should be okay. Well, I can enjoy the last of the sunset from here inside my cozy car, because it's just too cold to sit outside and eat. Bon appetit. And salut. Well, as predicted, full belly, cozy in bed, going to sleep. Nighty night. Uh, good morning. I actually spent a pretty quiet, peaceful night. Wasn't disturbed by anyone, didn't have any unexpected visitors, except for Jack Frost. <laughs> I don't remember inviting him to this camp out. Man, it must have been cold last night because, well, I had plenty of blankets. I was warm. Like I said, I have a down bag and I had socks on and a blanket over my head and everything. So I was toasty. But when I woke up this morning, man, there's like frost on everything. It must have been way down in the 20s. Fortunately, though, I woke up. And it's a beautiful, sunny, blue day, just like Nevada used to be. <laughs> so I got some water boiling here to make some coffee, and I'm going to get ready, clean out my car, pack up, and, well, explore this place some more. Whew. Okay, I hiked up the hill so that I could get an overview of the site. And whew, what a view it is. I mean, first of all, it's just a beautiful valley. And then you can see <laughs> there's my campsite there. But look at you over, <laughs> peep through that saddle there. That's a secret government base. Let's see them aliens. Anyway, the real reason I climbed up here was to look down this uh, mill. I think this was an old mill. I'm standing at the very top of it, so we ought to be able to get a pretty good idea. You can see it went down a few stories. I don't know how you tell how many stamps were in a mill, but it doesn't look like it was a very big one. I mean, it was probably just for this little site, which... While I was reading about the history, and this was actually a pretty uh, well-producing site, I think. Like, this was right around the time of the Goldfield boom, which Goldfield, Nevada had a huge gold strike right around the same time, a little bit before this. And we're not actually that far away from Goldfield, so uh, this place... Unlike Goldfield had a ton of, well, there's a lot of timber, or I guess there was a lot of timber around and plenty of water. So it was pretty easy for a town to spring up. And apparently it was quite the town. I mean, even though it was pretty short lived, I think it was founded in 1904 and it basically, well, the mine shut down in the end of 1906. So only like two years, the news or the, the post office did uh, hang on till 1907, but really it was only for all intents and purposes, a two year ghost town. But I guess it really was something in its heyday because according to what I read online, it had stores, saloons, a post office, a newspaper, and there was even a weekly stagecoach route to Tonopah, which I guess technically as the crow flies, I think Tonopah is only like the under 40 miles from here. I can't imagine what route the stagecoach would have taken. Probably not the way I came because that was pretty bumpy to be doing in a stagecoach. Back then, of course, there wasn't no secret government base. So they were probably able to just cruise right through that saddle across that plane. And well, boy, howdy, I bet they were in Tonopah in no time. <laughs> Man, can you imagine how much fun that stagecoach ride would have been from this Wild West mining camp? Which, by the way, we're pretty remote out here. There was no, I didn't read anything about a sheriff or there being any kind of law out here. So... Man, this place must have been wild. But can you imagine taking a stagecoach from Silver Bow to Tonopah? Yeehaw, it's payday. We're going to go see some of them ladies. Because that's one thing I didn't read about here is uh, I don't know if there was any brothels. If anything, maybe just some poor lady in a tent, you know what I mean? So payday came. They jump on the stage and go down to Tony Paw, And, well, they'd have themselves a time. While I'm up here, I might as well just do one more nice long look at the secret government base. I'll zoom in, even though I don't have a very good camera, just so you guys can see. 
<laughs> According to the uh, Rachel Nevada website that I got most of this information from, this part of the Nevada test site is actually the Tonopah Electronic Combat Range. Whatever that is. Electronic Combat. Basically like real life video games, I guess. Well, gee, I mean, it would be fun to camp out here for like a week and explore everything thoroughly. But unfortunately slash fortunately, I have two other really cool uh, things in the area I want to check out today. So I don't want to spend all day here. But anyway, yeah, I'd come back here, especially with a group of friends, have a ghost town hoedown. Hey, wait a minute. That sounds like fun. A ghost town hoedown. Who's in? <laughs> and then we can all bring our high-powered binoculars and spy on the government while we're at it. 